Hello everybody, I'm Eternal Flame here, and today we are here to do a JJK chapter review for chapter 256, which is the decisive battle in the uninhabited, demon-infested Shinjuku part 28. As always, Giga has the best naming scheme. Like, I'm thinking it'll start to get a little bit old, but no, no, it's just perfect. If it's an oldie, it's a goodie, you know, it always is a good. And if you know anything at all about this chapter, and a lot of things about it, a lot of good things happen, a lot of things in general happen, there's just a lot of things to discuss, which I'm really, really happy about. But before we even do get into the chapter, be sure to like and subscribe to anime content like this, and more importantly, there is something else I kind of want to share with you guys. Whenever I do these chapter reviews, there are a mix of my first reaction and also my thoughts, which is why I kind of stop in the middle of these points. And I have, like, a little bit of time to just talk about it, what they, I think it means, all that good jazz. So, yeah, without further ado, let's actually get into this. So, this chapter starts out with a Gojo flashback, with someone off-screen asking to teach us Gojo-sensei to him. Now, there is one of two situations of what this could be. Either A, this is a flashback and Gojo is teaching some students that are in another year how to do the Black Flash, or B, this is the afterlife and Gojo's getting interviewed for no reason by God in the afterlife. Which, either of them are possible, let's be real, this is JJK. Like, let's be real, I'd have them impossible. But what Gojo says about the Black Flash is even more interesting in my opinion. As it actually disproves something that I have been preaching for the longest time, which is the Black Flash is possible to master. The reason why I thought for the longest time that the Black Flash is possible to master is because that it's believed that in order to land a Black Flash at will, you need to land your cursed energy in physical strife at one millionth of a second within each other. However, Gojo goes on to explain even further that that is wrong, at least in his opinion. As Gojo says, why can't I use a Black Flash whenever I want? Why do you think I could in the first place, because of the six size? They say that the Black Flash is a distortion of space that occurs when cursed energy and a physical strike land within a millionth of a second of each other. Personally, I think that definition is a bit lackluster. I mean, if that's the whole secret behind it, then I could land it at will. For instance, if I load up my fist with cursed energy and throw a punch, that cursed energy is either 1, the type that will strengthen my fist, 2, the type that will crash into my opponent, or 3, the type that will do both. Now this description is really really interesting, because in my opinion this is very intentionally highlighting that the Divergent Fist is actually kind of similar to the Black Flash, it's just a much grander time screen. So if you were to get closer and closer to that time frame, you could probably make the Divergent Fist stronger and stronger, which is also what Toto had related to the Divergent Fist to being Black Flash. So yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Which like I said before, this also debunks the entire notion that the Black Flash can be mastered, at least through this method, that it's possible to master it through timing out your cursed energy. Or at least that timing out your cursed energy is the only step necessary to mastering it. As now we're going to continue on with what Gojo says. As Gojo then says, it's not just the timing of the hit. Depends on the blend, it's a toss-up. And it's not like anyone can even control the third type. Well, anyone except for me. On top of that, the blend needs to change depending on the environment, things like your physical condition or your opponent's cursed energy. This might make you laugh, but I personally think there's some connection with temperature and humidity. Black Flash is a spatial phenomena after all. The point is, there's no correct answer as to how to unleash a Black Flash. When I'm really going for it, I incorporate my curse technique into my strikes, ultimately making it come down to luck even for me. I mean, Nanami's consecutive Black Flash record is higher than mine. Having said that, if we're talking about total number, I'm higher, I clean up quick, so there's no time to land them consecutively. Before we then swap over to the narrator, as the narrator says, he was later surpassed in this aspect by Itadori as well. Now, before we do continue off the chapter, I do want to spend a little bit of time breaking down this information and what's really important, because a lot of this is really just actual important information about how a Black Flash works. I am probably going to need to make an updated video about everything we know about the Black Flash, because the one I made before is heavily out of date now. So up first, I'm going to go over the easier information, then I'm going to go over the harder information that's going to be more important. Number one, Gojo probably could have actually tied out Nanami's record, at least that's what I think this chapter is implying. It's just that Gojo's Black Flashes are so potent that every single opponent that has taken a Black Flash, which is likely just a bunch of cursed spirits and probably cursed users as well, have ended up getting one shot by those Black Flashes which is not surprising considering how strong Gojo's blue punches already are since they're strong enough to make Yuta and Hikari vomit with one punch. So I really doubt that there's anyone aside from Sakuna and Sakuna's amp Shikigami that's actually surviving these black flashes. We also know that Gojo has landed a bare minimum of nine black flashes total in his life. 
The reason why we know the number is 9 is purely because, assuming that it's actually just Gojo's landed an equal amount to Yuji, and Yuji surpassed him in Black Flash amount this chapter, then Gojo has landed 9 in total, because Itadori has landed a total of 9. Where he landed 5 in his battle against Hanami, he started out with 1, and then later into the battle he landed 4 consecutively, then he landed 1 against the Blood Brothers, and then he finally landed 3 against Mahito. So bare minimum, that means Gojo has landed a total of 9 Black Flashes, but it could very well be possible that he's landed massively more than that and we just do not know. But I do think it's important to establish the bare minimum he has landed up to this point. Now I am going to save the specific functions of the Black Flash for its own separate video and how they each would get in the way of someone properly landing the Black Flash because if I were to talk about them in this video I would be here for another 10 minutes and I don't think anybody wants that for this specific video that's made to be a chapter review. All I'm going to say is this. I don't think that any of these qualities actually make it so the Black Flash is impossible to master, it just makes it that much more significantly difficult to actually master. Because even as Gojo himself said, the point is there's no correct answer as to how to unleash a Black Flash, mainly because of the fact that the Black Flash itself is extremely situational, and so much can actually affect whether you do land a Black Flash or do not land a Black Flash. So unless you are able to make those calculations extremely fast in your brain, and even then there are things that can get in the way, for example, someone else's curse energy as well, or even you just not having the right type of curse energy or just not being the right day, there are things that can potentially get in the way. But it still should be possible in theory to master, at least in my opinion, just significantly more difficult. And likely not a 100% mastery rate because no one has complete control over the world. Though funnily enough, we have also seen black flashes of each of those types of curse energy be used in the past. For example, when Mahito used a black flash against Yuji the first time, he actually used curse energy type 2, which is a type that will crash into my opponent. Basically, when we see Mahito's fist be surrounded by curse energy, he was using type 2. Yuji usually uses type 1 as well as type 3, because I think Yuji did use type 3 for his final black flash against Mahito, because we actually see the curse energy rising around his hand. Now, I'm going to go much more in depth with the video itself about the updated everything we know about the Black Flash to try and see if we can figure out each type of curse energy type that was used in the Black Flash, but that's going to be for another video, like I said. Jeez, we are seven minutes into the video already, and I'm only two pages done. All right, let's actually continue with this. As then in the next panel, we get Maki, Miguel, Yuji, and Choso all looking at Sukuna and analyzing Sukuna's current state. With Maki now making the realization that Miguel and Larey aren't actually on their side, and that that was the backup that Yuda was talking about. So that's actually kind of funny that they didn't actually know that Miguel and Larey would be on their side, or at least who their potential backup was going to be, which I do find kind of funny because it really shows how little they actually did end up talking. And Miguel is just like, okay, no, we need to get out of here now. Sakuna is starting to regain his power, and Choso, Yuji, and Maki are all realizing they need to finish this up and quickly, or else Sakuna is going to be able to fully gain his RCT back. As then the battle begins between the three of them, with Maki, Yuji, and Choso all going for Sakuna. And you can tell Sakuna primarily has his eyes on Maki, which I completely understand considering the fact that Maki is most definitely the most lethal one there, mainly because they have the Soul Split Katana, you know, the thing that if it touches you, it's going to bypass your durability and cut you off. And considering Sakuna's down to two hands by this point, things could get really bad if he ends up losing a hand, especially because Maki's entire Soul Split Katana is much more difficult to heal than just normal attacks, even if Sakuna Sakuna's RCT is recovering, so it's understandable why he's mainly looking at Maki. Before it's then, Sakuna launches out slashes from his hand, basically doing the entire movie did against Kusakabe earlier in order to not use his hand signs and just launch slashes out against Maki, in order to launch Maki away as Yuji picks up a railing and presses it against Sakuna. And I absolutely love how Yuji just loves to use the area around him. People called me crazy for saying that Yuji would unironically throw rocks at opponent and that would be his projectile option. Well, look who's crazy now, everybody. Anyways, Choso at the same time also goes in for an attack using piercing blood on the Sakuna, or at least he tries to, but Sakuna dodges as Maki goes through the building right after and tries to sneak attack him, pressing him against the wall with the Soul Split Katana stabbed into him as Sakuna is trying to hold it back, likely using the entire cleave hand application that he was using beforehand. As Choso for the first time basically sees Sakuna and Maki start to air hop with each other, and Choso is just completely shocked by this, which is completely understandable because this is a not human thing to be able to do. This is a cursed thing to be able to do, or a heavenly restriction thing that we're able to do, and I'm getting massive 215 and 214 flashbacks right now, because Sakuna and Maki did the exact same thing back then too. 
but now we get to see it a little bit more, but not much more. As Sakuna just has this wide smile on his face, and he's about to use the Black Flash using either Cursed Energy Type 2 or Cursed Energy Type 3. I genuinely do love the air hops, by the way. That's one of my most favorite applications of Jiu-Jitsu. Well, not applications of Jiu-Jitsu, but actual fighting abilities in Jiu-Jitsu, because air hopping is just so fun. As then, Sakuna lands another Black Flash on Maki, but this one's even more impressive, because Maki is still standing. Before Maki could even get a chance to breathe or try and heal off these Black Flash hits, Sakuna just launches two more slashes at them, because I think Sakuna is just done with having to deal with the Soul Split Katana by this point, as Maki then says the output of his base slashes is increasing too. So the Black Flashes up to this point are starting to work to heal away at everything that has been done to Sakuna so far. After all, before this battle happened, Yuji did land another hit that was blocked by Sakuna beforehand, but it should be remembered blocking Yuji's hits do not matter because he can still affect the soul, so the only answer to it is dodging. However, Sakuna is starting to recover because Maki does make this statement. However, Choso then chooses to launch a giant supernova explosion at Sakuna, thinking that it would work, but it's pretty clear Choso's never watched an anime before once in his lifetime. As then, two slashes are launched out right at Choso, but at the same time, Sakuna moves behind Choso, perception blitzing him, but at the same time, Choso also says he moved faster than the slashes and got behind me. So this for sure proves that Sakuna is faster than his own slashes, something that I've been pushing for the longest time, and this is the final boat of evidence that we need because someone has now actually straight up just said it. Granted, we also kind of knew this when he fought Maki because he did literally perception blitz Maki while Maki was also reacting to the slashes, including the output amped through chanting World Slash, yet Sakuna is still able to perception blitz them. Before it's then, Sakuna black flashes Choso after throwing him into a wall. However, Choso being the big brain man he is, forces blood around Sakuna's hand in order to hold it there, as Sakuna says he reduced the damage by making armor from his blood, doing the same thing that he did against Yuji in order to take that hit so long ago, and now doing it against Sakuna. I love Choso, man is an amazing tactician. Choso is legit in my top two favorite characters for JJK, I absolutely love this man. And speaking of, and the other person who's in the top two, Yuji socks Sakuna straight in the face. Which y'all know what that means. Yuji has nerfed Sakuna's output even more. But we also get something very, very interesting, because Choso has now given us a way to actually quantify how much of an output nerf Yuji does with his punches, and they are significantly stronger than I thought. As Choso thinks to himself, that's right, no matter how fired up he gets, through his black flashes, Yuji's blows will keep weakening his curse energy output and his control of the body. Number one, this is even more proof that Yuji's soul punches should lower the output of anybody, not just Sakuna, because Choso also specifies his curse energy output and his control of the body as two separate things, which means Yuji can likely just punch souls out of other people's bodies, which is kind of similar to what he did against Kusakabe, where everyone thought he swapped souls with him, and something I've been pointing out for a while that that wasn't Yuji's original intention to swap souls, but that's beside the point. However, the more important thing is how much we can actually quantify this now, because what Choso is implying is basically each of Yuji's hits are equivalent to a Sakuna Black Flash in terms of output nerf to buff. So if Sakuna were to land a Black Flash and get his output back through that, Yuji would set him back down with a punch, which means that Yuji's punches are equal to the output regained through a Black Flash. Mainly because of the wording of Choso's statement being, that's right, no matter how fired up he gets through his Black Flashes, Yuji's blow will keep weakening his curse energy output and his control of the body. In my opinion, this is more so just Choso saying that no matter how many Black Flashes Sakuna lands, it doesn't matter because Yuji will keep punching him and nerfing him back down. However, right back to the battle that's happening between Yuji and Sakuna. Sakuna ends up punching a hole for Yuji's side, which means that's number 5 for fatal injuries that Yuji manages to heal off as he grabs Sakuna while Sakuna is trying to slam him into the ground and pulls him into another punch, basically hanging off his head, while also preparing to fire a piercing blood right at his head, as we get a reveal from Choso saying, Yuji can't yet use convergence effectively, which is why I need to keep looking after him. As Yuji says, piercing blood, firing a piercing blood right at Sakuna's cheek, actually making him bleed a little bit successfully and damaging him. Which, by the way, just speaks to the level that Yuji's piercing blood actually is at, because it is his curse energy being amped by it that actually ends up doing this much damage to Sakuna. Meanwhile, when it shows this piercing blood, he can just palm it or he can just dodge it pretty easily, which, to be fair, Yuji was using it at pretty close range, so that could be the reason why, and the other times Sakuna just dodged it, it was at a far range. So we don't know if this is the strength of Yuji 
use piercing blood with his curse energy poured into it or just piercing blood in general but it is still incredibly impressive nonetheless i'm still currently leaning closer towards yuji's thanks to how much curse energy he's pouring into it however this does kind of confirm that yuji wasn't the one who fired the piercing blood at sakuna back when he fought higuruma though at the same time it could be possible that chozo had passed the blood off to yuji for yuji to fire it like he did beforehand which at the same time speaks to how heavily nerfed in terms of output sakuna actually is by this point because beforehand he could open palm these piercing bloods but now he's just getting severely damaged by it which really speaks to how much numbers they've actually done by this point as is then right after we get this really really cool panel of yuji about to use the black flash on sakuna and we get a narration tech that's very very important as the narrator then says at that moment just as Maito had sensed from Itadori Yuji in Shibuya, Sakuna felt the same premonition of an incoming black flash. However, as Sakuna looks over to Larey, as Sakuna says, What? My eyes are glued to that sorcerer. And then we get back to Larey, as then Larey says, It isn't just bodies that I can clutch with heart catch. Once I've had a hold of someone, I can even seize their heart. As is then right after, Yuji lands by far and away the biggest black flash we have ever seen in the series on Sakuna's heart. And we get the narrator state, unleashing his potential with a single blow. Beneath scattering sparks of black, Itadori Yuji awakens. Even the rays of hope shine black. Now, I need to say this, Larey is the team MVP right now because he is the reason Yuji could land this Black Flash, but also, holy, this Black Flash is massive, and I absolutely love this chapter. This was one of the goaded, if not the goaded chapter. Sakuna's about to be in a really, really bad spot, considering what a normal Soul Punch did to him, and this is also leading the path to Yuji Awakening. To Yuji Awakening, the full potential, and I think we're about to see Yuji go crazy next chapter. I am so hyped for this because this looks like we're betting the setup for a Yuji vs Sakuna 1v1 to happen and this is going to be amazing. But yeah, there was a lot for me to talk about in future videos for this chapter. It was a really good chapter in my opinion. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you all have a good day. Tell me what you think about this chapter in the comment section down below. I'm going to see you all later. Have a good day. Peace out.